Welcome, this is Dr. Shiva Ayadure, and I'm going to share with you visually the interconnections of how Elizabeth Warren is involved in a network of collusion with a number of partners and how she's using and spearheading this effort to literally whitewash her image of being a fake Indian. Many of you know I've been relentless in exposing Elizabeth Warren as being a fake Indian and her lack of honesty and her lack of integrity. So let's begin with what's going on now. Some of you may know that right now um, there's an interesting issue taking place with the Mashapee Wampanoag. The Mashapee Wampanoag about uh, 10 years ago received official uh, registration as a tribe and they then sought to get the ability to get a land and to trust so then they could use that to build a casino. Now, in fact, the casino name that they have it now is First Light Resort and Casino, which is uh, a section of land after they received registration. The Obama administration took land into trust through the Department of Interior and they allowed the Mashapee the rights to start building a casino. In order to do this, the Mashapee went to a Malaysian casino operator called Genting, a Malaysian firm which has its U.S. headquarters, uh, Genting Americas, and that organization has put in around $249 million into First Light Resort and Casino, for which they will receive 18% interest, quite a high interest, some people call it usurious interest or usury. And in addition to this, Genting will also receive about 40% in casino gross revenue. What gets even more interesting is, after this deal was set up, a number of Taunton residents, around uh, 20 to 25, 30 residents, got together and they felt this was wrong. Some of them actually uh, of Native American descent, who felt that the Mashapee Wampanoag leadership had misled the Department of Interior. And the fact was that uh, they did not have a right to bring land into trust because that was only true true of tribes that were recognized uh, during a, a structuring of 1934. Anyway, they took it to court and the judge actually ruled in favor of the Taunton residents. In spite of significant amount of money that Jen Ting had put in to overturn this ruling. And now the Department of Interior is weighing whether Mashapee Wampanoag have right to still do this, perhaps using Massachusetts as a surrogate. Well, what gets interesting is that the person who's heading up Genting is an individual by the name of Kevin Jones, who's the president of the resorts part of Genting, as well as the SVP of strategy of Genting. Interesting enough, he used to work at a law firm called Cleary Gottlieb, and we'll come back to this, why this is important. And moreover, Kevin Jones is a Harvard Law School graduate. What's even more interesting is that the current legal counsel who's representing Genting in the case to try to overturn the, the ruling of the courts is someone by the name of Steve Horowitz, who was in 1978 the head of the Harvard Law Review, again another Harvard Law School graduate and an expert in acquiring land or land into trust. So you can see there's quite a bit of interesting interconnections about Harvard Law School graduates who were alumni of Clearly Gottlieb, one who went to become the head of Genting and the other was actually representing Genting. Now what's even more interesting to understand is that clearly Gottlieb, um, we estimate, again, this is hard to find this, but you can estimate it by recognizing the endowment amount or the salary that Elizabeth Warren received. We estimate about $10 million in that range, could be plus or minus three or four million, was given to Harvard to set up an endowed chair called the Leo Gottlieb Professorship. It's very interesting. So Cleary Gottlieb uh, uh, generated uh, or funneled money into Harvard to set up this chair. And by the way, interesting enough, Elizabeth Warren was a holder of that professorship for which she received the 350K per year. Typically in many institutions, when an endowed chair or chair set up, the $10 million is put into some account interest-bearing account or some investment, and that funds the salary, in this case, for Elizabeth Warren. So Elizabeth Warren, uh, furthermore, 
uh, is being influenced by lobbyists at Gavel Resources who've also been hired by Jen Ting and have been paid as of now around $320,000 to influence Elizabeth Warren, who is involved in attempting to overturn the judiciary ruling or ju judicial ruling with passing a Senate bill which would give the Mashapee uh, recognition to put the land into trust around those 300 acres. Now, clearly she's doing this and using her network of connections so she can uh, whitewash her fake Indian status. As many of you know, I've been relentless in exposing this lack of integrity. Our bus sign says only a real Indian can defeat the fake Indian, which has caused a lot of uproar and generated me quite a bit of uh, popularity as the anti-establishment independent candidate. But fundamentally, when you look at this, I call this Fake Indian Inc. Its partners include a fake university. I considered Harvard fundamentally a fake university. It's really a $40 billion hedge fund and a powerful law firm, in this case, clearly Gottlieb, by the way, which endowed the chair that Elizabeth Warren used to head up and a Malaysian billionaire casino organization. And the mission here is to exploit real Indians by every means. In closing, I'd like to say this is not new. As late as the 1640s, Harvard, uh, when it was undergoing bankruptcy, was having a major financial crisis. It did the same thing. It uh, to avoid their financial bankruptcy, they found a group of people who were interested in promoting the gospel, and they had them give money to Harvard to set up a Indian college. And with those monies, they built a building, uh, which was to uh, support education of hundreds of Indians, Native Americans. In fact, what they ended up doing was only educate and graduate four Indians slash Native Americans, and they ended up using that facility uh, to actually run the Harvard Printing Press, as well as educate other uh, uh, white non-Native American students. So th the notion of using Native Americans, the notion of using, in this case, a Wampanoag, is not something new. Elizabeth Warren is essentially following and spearheading the tradition that Harvard has done for many, many years. So that's what's going on, fake Indian ink. Now here's a simple alternative to all of this nonsense which only serves to help Elizabeth Warren, Harvard, clearly Gottlieb, and Genting. So I say we get rid of this and we go to what I call real Indian ink, where Harvard University pays reparations directly to the Mashpee Wampanoag. So what that looks like is Harvard directly give a $1 billion interest-free loan, because I believe the Mashpee Wampanoag have every right to put land into trust and to start a casino. But it should not come from all this nonsense. Harvard should directly pay this for reparations for crimes committed. So that's what we need to do. Eliminate all this nonsense. Let Harvard put their money where their mouth is. They claim they want to help all the minorities. They claim they want to be good citizens. And this is a simple way to do it. Let Harvard University pay reparations by giving the Mashpee Wampanoag a $1 billion interest-free loan. They can use that loan to pay off the uh, loan that they got entrapped into by Genting. They can start clean. That's what should be done. That's what I call real Indian ink.